We want to advance the technology to make possible the development of energy autonomous wireless pressure sensor that is powered through uh, pressure fluctuations in hydraulic systems. An energy autonomous wireless sensor is a, is a device that can power itself from energy of the, of the environment, so without the need of batteries. This is a huge improvement for wireless sensing and for the new trend of the Internet of Things. One driving force behind uh, the research on energy autonomous sensors is that with the Internet of Things and the fourth industrial revolution, uh, which is a huge interest in companies and people right now, is that you need to deploy thousands of thousands of sensors which will supply the data and monitoring of different variables in process and systems. So Internet of Things means you want to measure everything, you want to be able to, to sense everything. This means a lot of sensors. And right now it will mean a lot of batteries. If you have thousands of sensors, you will have thousands of batteries. And batteries are not very good because when the battery runs out, you have to change the sensor. And this is added maintenance cost and ultimately it's a waste. It will end up in, in, in the environment. So you want to avoid batteries. And energy harvesting uh, technologies really uh, eliminate batteries. You collect energy from the environment so the wireless sensors can operate uh, as long as there's energy in the environment. But to achieve energy autonomy, you have to look into the environment and to see what kind of energy sources are in the environment. For example, in the environment we can find heat, we can find light, we can find radio waves, acoustic noise. So we look into, into these energy sources, measure how much power you can get from that, and, and see if it's enough to power up a wireless sensor node. It is very important to, to look into making reliable, long-lasting uh, wireless sensors. You want to be able to deploy the sensors and forget about it forget about maintenance, about removing it. You want it to operate as long as there's energy in the environment and as long as you need it. So when you have an uh, energy harvesting case, you look into first uh, the process to see what kind of energy is in the process. And you look at the energy, measure it, and see what kind of technologies will help you to transform that environmental energy into electrical power, which is what uh, electronics use. So it's very important to look in how you are going to take that energy, focus it, uh, make the conversion as efficient as possible, and then turn it into electrical power. So it means looking into the physics, into electronics, and to how to store it and properly use that energy. Right now, my research is focused on energy harvesting from hydraulic systems, specifically on pressure fluctuations in hydraulic systems. So we look into the system for, for hydraulic systems and we identify that pressure fluctuations are an interesting energy source where you can harvest energy. So we look into the complete device. We look from the physics of pressure fluctuations. We look into how to convert it and how to store it. Hydraulic systems are a widely used technique in industry and commercial applications. And it's very interesting to look at these kind of systems because all the work is done by hydraulic pressure. Apart from the pump, there is no, there is no need for electrical power. So to monitor all the variables in hydraulic systems, so the temperature, so the pressure, so the rotation, flow, uh, you need right now electrical wires and you don't really need them. So it's a very interesting opportunity for energy harvesting. In a hydraulic system you can find different uh, type of ambient energy. You can find heat, you can find rotation, you can find flow, uh, and you can find acoustic noise. Acoustic noise is what is very interesting for us because it's everywhere in, in a hydraulic system. If you have access to the fluid, the, the pressurized fluid, you have access to acoustic noise. Uh, acoustic noise in hydraulic systems is found as a form of pressure fluctuations. They come from the pump. So anytime 
hydraulic system is operating, there will be noise. And this noise in hydraulic system right now is an unwanted noise. People is researching on how to get rid of it. So we're looking to, oh, this is very interesting, how instead of getting rid of this noise, how about if we convert it to electrical energy? So we can reduce noise and apart collect the energy required to power up uh, wireless sensors. When you look into an energy harvesting uh, application, you look into what type of technologies you can use to harvest energy. Uh, hydraulic systems are very unique applications because any type of harvester you put in the pressurized fluid, it will be in constant stress. It will be always on compression. And we need a technology that can stand the force. And piezoelectric energy harvesters, piezoelectric generators, are a smart material that when you compress it, you get electrical power. And their characteristics and the properties really make them ideal to stand the compression. They can stand up uh, thousands of newtons without breaking. So they are really good option to use uh, for hydraulic systems. Uh, my research focuses on every element comprising an energy harvesting for pressure fluctuations, from the acoustic part to the electrical, how to extract electrical energy efficiently. Uh, regarding the acoustic part, we look into different interfaces or acoustic resonators that can focus and amplify uh, acoustic pressure to better utilize this energy. Uh, commonly, people used to have uh, a structure called Helmholtz resonator, which is a simple structure that can amplify pressure waves in a narrow frequency uh, range. And we utilize a new concept called a space calling resonator, which is possible made by 3D printing. So it's not possible with uh, normal uh, manufacturing techniques. So a space calling resonator is, is very similar to a Hemsworth resonator, but instead of having a straight neck, we kind of coil a very, very long neck inside a very small structure. This allows us to lower the resonant frequency of a conventional Hemsworth resonator. So instead of having a huge device to focus, for example, a 100 hertz pressure wave, we only need a very small device uh, made possible with 3D printing. With this device, instead of having, if you, if you don't use a uh, resonator, you get, for example, 1x power. With, with, a, with the space color resonator, you get up to four times the power, which is very good in, in terms of energy harvesting. From the part of the pressure to force interface, we investigated different type of interfaces and how they respond to static pressure and how they respond to frequency. And we, we categorize on where to use this type of interfaces and which one will yield the better efficiency under different circumstances. And from the part of the uh, transducing force to electrical energy, we model a piezoelectric energy harvester, which is not very commonly used in the research area of energy harvesting, but is a very good uh, device that can yield a lot of power if it's properly interfaced. And for this, we look into different topology circuit interfaces and come up with the efficiency of different interfaces and how the different topologies will impact the generation of power. Uh, right now we are using a voltage doubler with a, a interface that can improve uh, up to three, four times the power. So each improvement from the acoustic 
to the circuit interface uh, make, can make a device uh, more efficient than it was previously uh, reported. The recent advances in electronics have managed to lower the power requirements of embedded systems and wireless systems. And there's a good thing because there is not need of much power to operate uh, the systems. And thanks to the improvements of the space column resonator and amplification of uh, pressure fluctuations and the improvements of a circuit interface, you need very small pressure to be able to start a uh, wireless system. For example, a pressure sensor and can broadcast data every second with as slow as 0.2 bar, which is pretty low in terms of hydraulic systems. The future of this technology will have a huge impact of, on the Internet of Things. When you are able to build a sensor, a wireless sensor node that can be deployed anywhere and be certain that it will operate as long as there's environmental energy. You don't need batteries, you don't need maintenance, and you reduce the waste.